You are listening to an MLGA Network podcast. Phil? Uh. Oh, good. You made it this time. Phil? Don't tell me you're mad. Mad? Whatever could I be mad about? That I did that episode, you know, without you, while you were on your trip. Ha! Quite the contrary there, ZZ Top. I think it's absolutely hilarious. What's hilarious about it? That it took you recruiting literally half a dozen people to try to fill my shoes. May I add, unsuccessfully. It was a mere fraction of the charm and entertainment that I bring to this show. Well, you know, I wouldn't say that. I mean, they all did their best. I mean, except Ryan. Yeah, he really phoned it in. Blah, 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 pacifism, blah, blah, blah. I'm a nerd. (laughs) Well, you know, I did miss you while you were gone. Oh, really? I wouldn't have guessed. Oh, how the tables have turned. I'm never going to hear the end of this. What do I have to do to get this to stop? How do I prove to you that I love you and that you're totally irreplaceable? Do I need to trim my beard? Maybe get a haircut. I don't know, tattoo a portrait of your face on my chest? Name my next kid after you? Move to Arizona and become your gimp? Cam, 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 Cam. Let's not be dramatic. I have a very simple solution. Oh, really? Well, that's definitely reassuring. What do you want? I want a raise. 15%. Well, I mean, we we don't get paid. And you know that, right? You know that we don't get paid, right? Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Well, here's, here's the question, Bill Nye the Science Guy. What's a 15% increase of zero come out to? It comes out to not my problem. Make it happen. If this has to come out of your pocket... So frickin' be it. Come on, man. Be reasonable. I've got something like 22 kids to look after at this point. It's not really in my budget. I said make it happen. Welcome to Make Liberty Great Again, the best damn liberty podcast that you've never heard of. Phil and I will be your guides as we peer into the ridiculous reality of our society and our government. Let's get to it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Make Liberty Great Again, The Happening. I'm your host, Cam Harless, and with me, as always, is my super smart and super handsome and not at all insecure co-host, Phil Padilla. You forgot to mention super paid. We're still working that out. Come on. Um, Anyway, it's good to have you back. How was your trip? Awesome. Cool story, bro. Uh, Tell it again? Totally awesome. God, thank you for sharing so much detail. You're welcome. What do you have for us today? I'll let you guess. Is it murder? Is it tyranny? Maybe a little both? Just, Just tyranny this time. I mean, unless there's an injury. Is this about vaccines? Yep. Maine is changing the rules of the game. They are completely eliminating all philosophical and religious exemptions for vaccination. Are we becoming an anti-vax show? God, I hope not. I won't lie. I think the va- vaccines are a smart idea. And from what I know, they've done a lot of good. I've never died or become a gimp from contracting polio. Uh, but it's the little word that they put in front of vaccination that really grinds my gears. You mean mandatory? Yep. Uh, as an example, I'm very pro-gun. But if the state told me that I had to own a gun, whether or not I had to pay for it, you know, I'd actually push back on that. I think it'd be good for everyone if they owned a firearm so they could protect themselves. But making them mandatory, making people have guns who don't believe in owning guns, that's not anyone's place to decide besides the individual. Yeah, that's some real bullcorn. Motion to stop saying bullcorn and go with bullshark instead. Motion denied. Move on. That's some bullshark. All right. I'll think about it. Maybe it'll grow on me. Maybe it won't. But even guns would be less invasive than this. This this is our body that we're talking about. This is your children's body. Who are they to say that you can't make that choice for yourself or your, for your children? They're tyrants. Now, it, it doesn't say that they're getting rid of medical exemptions, but who's going to make this call? What if the one time that I give my brand new daughter a vaccine, she gets injured and spends the rest of her life unable to walk or talk or something like that? Vaccine injuries do happen. But even without that, I mean, this is, again, a question of self-ownership. This is the state not just telling you that they own your body, but that they own your kid's body, too. I really hope this doesn't spread to other states or go nationwide. Oh, me too. 
but for the moment, um, you can choose to escape to another state if you know if it's something that really bothers you, or maybe Somalia if you're feeling squirrely. Right. I mean, that was the idea of the failed constitution. Motion to call them to sacred texts. The motion passes. The failed sacred texts. If we go any further in that direction, it's, it won't matter. Gosh darn it, I, I hate the way the feds use the 14th Amendment. Let's just hope that incorporation doctrine doesn't leak out and hit us again. Hey, speaking of leaks, Assange was finally charged. And uh, it's an 18-count superseding indictment. So, Trump's finally vindicated the left's position that he's attacking the press. And as The Intercept puts it, quote, For the first time in U.S. history, the government is criminally prosecuting a publisher for printing truthful information. The government deciding who is and who isn't a journalist is a dangerous road to travel down. Indeedly. The Trumpster and his administration have charged Assange under the Espionage Act for conspiring to leak classified documents. The charges focus on how he allegedly encouraged Chelsea Manning to leak classified documents to him and to WikiLeaks. Fun fact, a lot of the leaked documents were also published by major news outlets like The Guardian and New York Times, but nobody has a problem with that. And, and if you're not familiar with the leaks, first off, shame on you. Secondly, seriously, shame on you. Thirdly, go look it up. And again from The Intercept, the indictment says, quote, Assange and WikiLeaks repeatedly sought, obtained, and disseminated information that the United States classified due to the serious risk that unauthorized disclosure could harm the national security of the United States. Which we established in a previous episode that no harm was done, and that was testified to. Exactly, you beautiful bench. The indictment language, in my opinion can simply just be translated to, we were embarrassed, and our war crimes exposed, so you gots to pay. Also, how does charging someone from a completely different country with espionage even work? I have no idea. Is it possible for CIA agents to be extradited by the Chinese government when they have stolen information from them? Sounds a little spurious to me there, partner. I mean, I can't say that I'm surprised, but it does seem kind of ironic that though Trump praised WikiLeaks back in 2016 during his campaign, but now he's looking to throw the book at Assange. And is it really espionage if the leaked info about the U.S. was provided to U.S. media outlets? I mean, he does say that the fake news is the enemy of the American people. I don't know much about the legality or legitimacy of the charges. I'm not an expert. But I'm sure the government will do whatever is necessary and whatever they can to punish him. And make sure that he pays for, you know, exposing their crimes. Speaking of crimes, do you know who Trump doesn't like or doesn't want to punish? Russians. Eh, close, but no. He has a soft spot for war criminals. Oh? Just before Memorial Day, Trump confirmed that he was considering presidential pardons for some service members accused of war crimes. People like Navy SEAL Eddie Gallagher, whose crimes we spoke about in a previous episode. And in case you need a refresher, he allegedly murdered an unarmed ISIS fighter and intentionally targeted civilians during a deployment to Iraq. Another is the Green Beret Matthew Goldstein, who allegedly murdered a suspected Taliban bomb maker, among other people. Two questions. One, does Trump own a moral compass? I mean, was he rich enough to have one of those? And uh, what direction is it pointing in? I think he's too rich to have one. He's probably in that category. And it's probably pointing right up his ass, seeing as how that's <laughs> what he uses to think with most of the time. But this is truly, you know, just a clown world we're living in. Punishing those, you know, who tell the truth and potentially pardoning and praising murderers. If the pardons go through, though, we know that sheeple indoctrinated to worship the military industrial complex are going to do nothing but applaud it. However, the one thing I do wonder is how military officials or the military just in general is going to react to being undermined like that. I mean, I'm sure they won't be thrilled, but none of that will matter. You're right. And uh, as a reward, here's another fun fact. I saw a guy that I was in the Marines with post on Facebook that he's voting for Trump in 2020 just because he's willing to pardon Eddie Gallagher. Imagine being that person. Oh, gross. No, thank you. So gross. But the moral to the story really is that we can't have the government deciding who is a journalist and who isn't. They cannot dictate what information is published and what isn't. Well, let's let's keep talking about attacks on the press. Reporters everywhere claim that they are in danger from Trump and that their First Amendment rights are at stake. Holy shirt. 
Did he do something? Nope. The Democrat mayor of San Francisco did. You know, these progressive a-holes really need to figure out if they're for or against free speech. The paradox of attacking Trump for attacking the First Amendment while simultaneously not favoring free speech, it j- it blows my mind. Well, I mean, it, it looks like she decided to take a stand in that arena. Lay it on me. She recently endorsed her police department's blatant violation of freelance videographer Brian Carmody's First Amendment rights. Back in April, two San Francisco police officers visited Carmody's home and requested that he reveal who leaked him a police report regarding the mysterious death of one of the city's public defenders. And we'll be linking to that story in the show notes so you can get the full scoop. I mean, all of the stories are, are always linked in the show notes. I know that. You know that. But did the dorks who listen to us and our drivel, do they know? Well, Carmody recounted the event as the police being nice about it, but he of course declined their request. Why wouldn't he? He goes on to state that the following Friday, a dozen officers returned with a search warrant and guns drawn. They also had a sledgehammer and a battering ram. That seems just a bit excessive. Is this guy related or have ties to Obama bin Laden or something? Nope. That's just modern policing. Carmody alleges that he was restrained in handcuffs for nearly six hours as his home was destroyed in the search. At the end of the raid, they seized laptops, phones, and hard drives, which included all of the images and documents he had saved during his 29-year career as a reporter and a cameraman. That's a bummer. How are the cops spinning this one? It doesn't look like they are. So far, they've neither denied nor contradicted the version of events in any way. But we know that they have yet to return his belongings. Here's a fun fact the article adds. The search also included FBI agents. Holy shift. They must have really wanted this guy bad. But, you know, it's absolutely his right not to divulge sources. And this, you know, subsequent treatment is just, it's all too telling of our slow descent into authoritarianism. Similar to Assange's case, you know, if you don't comply with the government, you're the enemy and you have to pay dearly. That's a a disturbing pattern we're seeing here. I mean, I couldn't agree more. But what's also disgusting is the mayor's stance that she took. Not only does she endorse these tactics, she's stating that the source of the leak needs to be found and held accountable for the release of this information. Her exact words are, I believe that someone from within the department needs to be held accountable for the release of this information, and the police need to continue that internal investigation using legal and appropriate means. Nothing about this is appropriate. And neither is an internal investigation. You know, I can... I can already see it now. The police investigate themselves and they find nothing wrong. No wrongdoing. Of course. And, you know, the the corporate press is absolutely silent. Because, you know. They're the enemy of humanity? Yep. So, I have to tell you, Uncle Joe's pulling a creepy again. You don't say. Shocking. I know. So what's the scoop? Well, do you remember that one time... He said he would stop touching women without their permission and be respectful of their personal space. I remember. He was up to his old antics when he appeared at the AFT town hall. He approached what turned out to be a 10-year-old girl and said, quote, I'll bet you're as bright as you are good looking. Ew. Double ew. Triple ew. All right, that's enough ews. Is it though? No. Ew. (laughs) There's video of him bringing her over to the reporters and standing behind her with his hands on her shoulders while he was speaking. And all this happened just because she said her favorite school subject is journalism. But let's, can I go off on a little side tangent real quick? What 10 year old is taking journalism courses? None. I hope. I don't remember being in like fourth, fifth grade and being taught journalism. Well, I mean, there are school newspapers. That early? I don't know, dude. I didn't go to public school. Well, I did. Maybe that's why I'm retarded. Question. Did, uh, did Creepy Uncle Joe get real close, put his hands on her shoulders, and whisper in her ear, if you like journalism, Trump's gonna murder you? Not that I'm aware of, but with his orange mad bad and that all the fear-mongering that his platform's based off of, wouldn't really surprise me. And, and this perv ball is still leading in the polls? I'm pretty sure that he is, sadly. But, you know, since it's clear he isn't going to stop and mainstream libs couldn't care less, he should have his aides carry around little spray bottles to squirt him when he's being inappropriate. They're going to need a lot of bottles. (laughs) Huh. Zing. Or maybe, hear me out, they can tie on one of those cones of shame that they give dogs when they cut off their dog hood. Wouldn't that be a spectacle? 
Yeah, that would be... You know what? That's, you might be onto something. That's not half bad of an idea. Now, you hear me out, okay? Okay, I'm listening. What if they ship him over to Best Korea and he massages the Supreme Leader into submission? Happy ending included. What better way to end tyranny than a little rub and tug? Come on. Can I say ooh again? Not to me. Never to me. I simply won't allow it. Uh, it's funny you mentioned tyranny because Alabama done messed up. Oh, do tell. Well, I will tell you. My little heart was broken. Just recently, Alabama, my home state, decided that they were going to embrace some nullification and tell the feds to screw off. Then this week, they decided that the next thing to do was start telling parents what they should do. Well, to be fair, don't all states do that? That's true. Um, But this one definitely rubbed me the wrong way. This last Thursday, the Alabama House of Representatives passed legislation requiring that all parents enroll their children in kindergarten. Well, some of those 16-year-olds that already went to kindergarten are going to be pretty salty about that. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they mean the kindergarten-aged children. Oh, that, that makes more sense. Sorry, big dog. This bill was sponsored by Democratic Representative Peblin Warren. I'm sorry? Did you say Peblin? I, I did not misread that. I googled it to make sure that it wasn't something that was just put in this article accidentally. Fork and peblin. Maybe she's just mad since her mom didn't go to kindergarten and couldn't come up with a better name than peblin. Peblin. That's the worst. That may be the worst name I've ever heard. Not to mention that she's a Warren. And you know political Warren women are poison. Well, in Alabama, uh, they're looking to require all children that are aged five by September 1st of every year to be forced to go to public kindergarten. What if the kids aren't ready, though? Isn't that the government's job to decide? No. That's a bull shark answer. I wonder how bad, like, kindergarten attendance in Alabama is to make these Democrats feel like this has to be a law and this has to happen. Oh, it's it's awful. Uh, Alabama has a kindergarten enrollment rate of 92% right now. That's a lot of kids that get sent to prison at five years old. It is. How do they see something like 92% and not go, hey... You know, that's pretty good. Because if something doesn't apply to all, the evangelical leftists have failed. They have to have 100% participation and 100% equality. But that's not possible. No, it's not. I mean, of course, some of the Republicans that were outvoted didn't like this one bit. Representative Andrew Sorrell asked, quote, Where does it stop? Will mandatory pre-K be next? That's a good question. How much parental choice is going to be taken away by this? The Democrats are actually going to swing for the fences. Another representative, Mary Moore, out of Birmingham, outright said that she thought that making pre-K mandatory is the next step. Okay, but there's there's got to be exceptions for homeschooling. Come on. I mean, yes, there are. But get this. The courses have to be approved by the state. Oh, mother father. That's just too far. Of course it is. Alabama's public school system is pretty abysmal, and they think that this will fix the issue. According to the test data released earlier this year by the Alabama Department of Education, only 47.5% of Alabama public school students in grades 3 through 8 qualified as proficient in reading. Just 38% of 5th and 7th graders tested as proficient in science in 2018. Wow, that's a whole lot of dumb. And... They really think that enrolling these kids earlier is just going to magically change that. I think some pie-in-the-sky socialists think that that's going to be the case. I'm sure they even think that this is a job and wealth creator. But it's not. Even the article pointed out that it hasn't helped. I would say that it makes it worse. Well, how so? What makes you say that? Well, for one thing, the best way to take the joy of learning away from a child is to send him to public school. And that's only compounded when you do it so early that it removes a vast majority of their early freedom and play learning. Putting these kids in too early just screws with the kids' heads and makes them not want to learn. Kids are naturally curious and natural learners. There's absolutely nothing quite as detrimental as sending them off to these education camps every day. I agree. I know that, you know, I hated going to those gulags. It was just, it was so boring and that forced socialization is just... Nothing good. I didn't like anything about it. Right. I never even went to public school. 
but sitting in a boring room with someone I barely knew trying to teach me things that I had no interest in at that time really turned me off from school and education. Sure, I liked being competitive and absolutely spanking the other kids with my grades, but I hated every moment of the process. When I finally got out and began to homeschool, I was able to find that joy again. When I was able to chase after things that interested me, I found out that I I actually wanted to learn. I mean, to this day, I still spend a fair amount of time exploring concepts that, right now, I don't understand. Me too. I'm very smart. (laughs) I know, buddy. (laughs) But really, schools, particularly public schools, are where most people have their first and maybe only experiences with violence. When you have family who love you or friends that you choose to be around, you don't deal with that as often. However, when you force people to be around each other with different personalities, beliefs, and insecurities, and don't let them walk away from it, you end up in a place where interpersonal violence is just part of the game. This really did get you off on a tangent. It sure did. Uh, This sort of law isn't going to help kids become any smarter. It isn't going to motivate them to learn. It's simply going to make it harder for them to care about learning. It's going to teach them to not think for themselves and actually probably to hate learning. I don't know how anyone sees this as a solution. Also, can we just say duck these political turds for trying to take away parental choice based on knowing one's child and knowing if they are ready or if it's a good fit for them at that time? Absolutely. Alabama, the U.S., the U.N., I mean, you name the state, can go play with themselves in the corner. I will absolutely not let them dictate that I have to ruin my own kids' lives and education. Are you just about done? I guess. Oh, hey, Phil. What is the most important political show in America? Talk about a subject change. What are you? Are you really? Are you really asking me this right now? I mean, did I? Did I stutter? What is the most important political show in America? Well, I'd have to say it's us. It's make liberty great again. Is that the answer that you were looking for? What? No, no. I was. I was actually asking you. Why? It's it's a lead into a story. Oh, really? What story? Seriously, Phil. <sighs> Whatever. Um, I saw an article this week called How the View Became the Most Important Political TV Show in America. Isn't that the show on ABC with all those commie benches? The same. And the most fascinating part is that this was not posted by the Babylon Bee. It was the failing New York Times. So the failing New York Times seriously thinks The View is the most important political show in America. Have you ever watched an episode before? Heck no. Why would I? I have no idea. I just Maybe if they were good looking or something, I don't know. I mean, maybe if I wanted to gouge my eyes out and stick an ice pick in my ears. But, well, that's pretty extreme. What is it exactly that makes The View so important? Well, for one thing, Meghan McCain is now one of the hosts. Oh, God. Okay. That's awesome, I guess. Yep. The progeny of the late, terrible, awful, warmongering John McCain. Also, 12 of the 26 people who have announced they are running for president have been on the show. Still not seeing what makes it so awesome. Michael Cohen almost went on the show? That That's Trump's dipstick lawyer, right? Yep. So he almost went on. Why is that a story? Well, first of all... I thought it was hilarious. I mean, imagine being that out of touch with reality. Secondly, I'm trying to get you to admit that you watch it. Seriously? That's what you're going with? You know I don't watch that show. Don't lie to me. Nobody who no, <laughs> nobody who I know watches this show. Heck, it comes on in the middle of the day while all the productive people are at work. So, you mean to tell me that bored housewives are really the most important voting block in America... Does the failing New York Times really believe that? I don't even know. But just remember that this is the paper who gave Paul Krugman a weekly column. They can't be too bright. Not too bright. They are literally a black hole where all that is good and the world goes to die. So, here's something fun. Alright, I like fun things. How into self-immolation are you? Are we talking about, like, what that monk did to protest how Buddhists were treated in Vietnam? Yep. So we're talking about, like, setting yourself on fire? Correct. Love it. Give me more. Well, a man set himself on fire 
outside of the White House. Oh. Why? I don't know, and I can't find any articles revealing his motives. Well, what do we know so far? Did he at least say flame on? Well, the only thing that we know is that Johnny Storm died from the injuries sustained. Hmm. It wouldn't be appropriate to laugh because this is crazy. Right? I mean, if you want to laugh, just just do it after we cut. I will do my best. <laughs> well, here's something not fun. Don't do this to me. I have this hilarious mental image of this guy setting himself on fire. Don't take that away from me. That is dark, dude. No, it isn't. Fire creates light. Well, you're not wrong, but I don't think you're right either. So, you know what? Let's call it a wash. All right, then. Go ahead and make me sad. Okay, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, or the notorious RBG, as absolute morons call her, decided to take a stand on abortion. I thought we already knew her views. Aren't they pretty clear? Oh, I mean, they're, they're absolutely clear. She just made it even more clear. She claimed that pregnant women aren't mothers. Seriously? What the ferg's up with that? Well, I mean, technically she said that pregnant women who decide to kill their unborn children aren't mothers. But what's true for the goose is true for the gander. That's not how the saying goes. Well, it should be. God, I hate you. First, you make me laugh with that hilarious guy setting himself on fire thing. Then you want to make me cry. Now, we've just really come full circle and you're just saying stupid stuff. Well, let me make it up to you. How? Okay, close your eyes. Okay, I don't know what this is for, but... I want you to reach into the deep recesses of your mind and pull out a memory. Oh, get on with it. Hillary Clinton collapsing while trying to get into that van. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you for having a bit of fun with us and joining us on this adventure into the madness that is our world. A special thank you, begrudgingly, to that weasel Ryan Brigette for writing assistance. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon at This Is MLGA. If you'd like to send us an email, you can reach us at This Is MLGA at gmail.com. Hit us up, subscribe, and make sure to rate us on iTunes. It helps us grow and guarantees new episodes. Also, only listen to us. All other shows are inferior. That is true, but don't forget to check out the MLGA Network. We're a small and scrappy group of libertarians that share all of the best liberty podcasts on MLGANetwork.com. So make sure to check that out. I mean, we're even going to have some more original shows coming your way relatively soon. We're happy to be here. And we're happy you're with us. Stay sane. <laughs> Do you ever imagine like what it must look like if Bill and Hillary ever did it? Oh, no, I don't imagine that. I don't, and I don't want to. I wonder when the last time they did it was. Oh, God. Um, definitely back in Arkansas. Can you imagine? Oh, my God, I hate you now. <laughs> <clears throat>